G'day guys, welcome back to True Footy. Uh, the trade period is done and dusted. I've done a full review of it yesterday on this channel. I'll leave a link to that in the top right corner if you want to see my thoughts on all of that. However, there is still tons of potential for more trades and more player acquisitions over the next few weeks before you even get to the draft. So we know pick swaps are still the thing, but of course they're still delisted free agency, uh, where players who have not been offered a contract by their current clubs can still join a rival club um, just simply by signing a contract and they'll be on their list. So today we're going to talk about a variety of different players who could be candidates to join clubs. Now I'm going to separate this into three different sections really. I'm going to go through the players that actually have been linked in the media to join a specific club that we could reasonably foresee coming up. Then I've got a list of players that I think subjectively have been delisted but could, could provide value to another club. I'm not going to simply name every single player that's been delisted, so part of this is my opinion. We'll go through some options that various clubs could have to sign these players to their list. And then I'll probably go through some notable delistings, and we got a little bit about players who have been delisted from their club that can go through and re-sign with them as a SSP player, a top-up player during the preseason. We'll also discuss why that is even a thing. So to be clear, delisted free agency opens on November. November 1st. So we've got a couple of weeks before contracts can be made official. I'm, I'm not too sure why it's delayed two weeks from now, to be honest. Uh, I presume there's some sort of logistical legwork that's got to be done in between now and then. And there's, there's certain clubs, I think Richmond hasn't made a single delisting yet. By the time this video comes out though, that might not be the case. So bear with me. We're going to go through all the stories that I'm aware of at this current point in time. So for clarity, four delisted free agents actually switch clubs last year. So we had Orazio Fantasia who joined Carlton from Port Adelaide. Sam Naismith went to Richmond. Uh, he has retired now. Oscar McDonald went to Fremantle. Toby Pink went to North Melbourne. Even though he hadn't played AFL in several years or hadn't been on the list for a while, he still counted as a delisted free agent. Further to that, further to those four players, we had players that were re-signed during the top-up SSP. Supplementary something, something, I can't remember. But players can train through the preseason and sign directly with clubs if they've been delisted. So that included Jack Bytel, who went to Collingwood, who I think has been delisted again. Josh Eyre. Jeremy Sharp, which ended up being quite successful there for Fremantle. Patrick Voss, also a degree of success. Uh, Marty Hall rejoined Melbourne last year, and Lockie Bramble went to the Bulldogs, and I think he had a pretty good year as well. So you can see from those examples, while there's only about 10 or 8 to 10 players that I mentioned there, a couple of those were decent success stories, and this is where clubs can find cheap ways to plug holes in the list. So without further ado, let's get into some of the candidates who could find new clubs over the next month or so. Just as a quick aside, there's been nearly 60,000 people over the last month that have watched multiple videos on this YouTube channel. They've watched one video and they've come back and watched more content. So that is just about double the amount of subscribers I have. So all I'd ask is if you are someone who is enjoying the content and wants to see more footy content over the off season and certainly through the draft and trade period, it would mean a lot to me if you considered subscribing provided you get something from my videos. All right, so I'm gonna put up a list of players where we have some degree of meaningful links to at least one club, in some cases two. So we'll start with Tim Membry. Mitch Cleary has reported, I believe on Twitter, uh, via Swoop Luke. But Mitch Cleary has confirmed that Membry will join the Pies ahead of Jack Hayes, provided a medical has been passed and will become a Pies player on November 1st. So if you're a Saints fan, you might raise your eyebrows because at this current point in time, I don't think Tim Membry has formally been delisted. However, he wasn't traded and he is without a contract for next year. So this is an important clarification as well. For a player to be delisted, the club has to have not offered a contract. So this is an interesting side note with Matt Owies here. Matt Owies, of course, got traded from Carlton to West Coast. And part of the reaction from Eagles fans about that particular deal, including by myself, which I've kind of sort of changed my mind about, is there was a belief that Matt Owies could have been signed as a delisted free agent. However, the important nuance to note here is if Carlton, after that trade period had concluded and they still had Matt Owies, in theory, they could have offered a, like a one-year small contract and that as far as I understand it, would constitute a contract offer, which means that Matt Owies would then have to go to the preseason draft or accept that one-year contract. So it's kind of an odd rule. We've never seen it really come up where a club has lowballed a player just to screw him over. In most cases, they will simply not offer a contract. So in this case, St Kilda could 
technically offer Tim Membry, you know, a, a bad contract, one that's worse than Collingwood. And then he would not be considered a listed free agent, in which case he'd have to go preseason draft and he'd end up at Collingwood anyway. So the ball's kind of in St Kilda's court here as far as I understand the rules. However, Mitch Cleary has suggested he will get to Collingwood. So that, that's probably one of the certainties we have. Jack Hayes is another one that we mentioned there. Now, I've included him in this list, even though the latest news is that the signing of Tim Membry means that Jack Hayes probably doesn't get to Collingwood. It was kind of one or the other. As an aside, I do think Membry for Collingwood is a pretty good move, like tall targets over 190 centimetres, obviously not a true key forward. I think he's still got a bit to offer and where Collingwood's at at the moment, they're looking at these top up talls. Uh, and there's another one to mention too to plug holes in their list where they probably have been a little bit deficient. So yeah, Jack Hayes to Collingwood, it, it might be off now, in which case we haven't really had a meaningful link as far as I'm aware to Jack Hayes going anywhere else. I think he's in his late 20s now, a mature age a recruit for St Kilda who had a bright start to his career, but maybe without a home going into next season. So Adam Tomlinson is the other one. Now he's had interest from both Collingwood and St Kilda, and I have no personal indication of which club is more likely. You can understand the need for a tall defender at Collingwood given Nathan Murphy's retirement this year and you know the fact that he's 30 or whatever. That won't put Collingwood off. They're looking for ready-made players who can step into the AFL team and play well. Now, Tomlinson would have a decision to make. Would he get more time at Collingwood versus St Kilda? The thing about Collingwood is that there is a chance they'll be playing late in September this year. So that's an interesting one to watch. I could see both Membry and Tomlinson getting to Collingwood, even if Jack Hayes seems less likely. Sam Day, this one seems like it's uh, odds on to happen now. It's been reported that he's likely to join the Brisbane Lions after being delisted by the Gold Coast Suns. Obviously, Danaher retired somewhat unexpectedly, and the Brisbane Lions didn't re recruit anyone in the trade period to plug that gap. So they're going to go the cheaper delisted free agency route. Sam Day is naturally at the end of his career, but similar to the, the logic with the other players there, we've got these teams in contention, topping up with players right at the end of their career to help them out structurally on field. So we could say, see Sam Day play a fair amount of footy. I know they've got Logan Morris, but there is still a big height difference. And I, I think Morris could play better if there is a tall player like a Day or a Danaher in that team. The other one we think is just about certain, I think, is Jack Martin getting to Geelong. We heard about that a month ago. Um, he didn't move clubs. I think he was delisted before the trade period, wasn't he? So there was no need to trade for Jack Martin. So we expect him to join Geelong um, at some point during the delisted free agency period. I think there was a medical done with Fremantle, but the noise for a long time now has been the Cats. Ben Payton from St Kilda has been delisted. I've seen a link to GWS here. Again, well, they're currently in the point of time where they might not have any players by round one. Um, but in addition to that, they've also lost a bit of depth. So they'd be looking at Ben Payton as, you know, potentially a round one starter at this point. But also there's been far more out than in, in the recent trade and free agency period for the Giants. Jack Carroll is another one linked to GWS and West Coast. So same logic, uh, I guess, here for the Giants. They lost a few players, bit of midfield depth. I'm actually unsure. I don't think Jack Carroll has been formally delisted. However, he's without a contract at this current point in time. So he'll have a decision to make between GWS and West Coast. Now he is West Australian. I'm not sure what West Coast is going to do this this trade period. They've actually got minimal list spots, and there's another player that they might you know add as a train on player or whatever. So we'll see what happens there. It could be either of those clubs. I don't think he will get another uh, contract at Carlton. Denver Grange Barras, former pick six in 2020, did not hit his straps at Hawthorne at all. Key defender or drafted it as one became a forward and Hawthorne have cut ties with him. Um, it doesn't help that they've just signed Josh Battle and Tom Barris. So the need for a Granger Barras anyway was pretty slim, whether it be as a forward or as a defender. So the links that I've read in the media are Carlton more strongly than West Coast. However, West Coast losing Tom Barras and not replacing him opens up the door for them to get the West Australian. So it could be one or the other at the moment. Um, Carlton obviously shopped around Lewis Young so, um, and he is staying. So I don't know if their needs are any different now, but we'll see about that one. So let's talk about a number of players I still think could potentially offer something to a new club without actually being linked to any club in the media, unless I'm wrong. So let me know in the comments if, uh, if you've seen something about any of these players. Hawthorne delisted Ethan Phillips. I think he was an SSP player this year when James Blank did his ACL. So they drafted a mature age 198 centimeter key position defender. In the end, Hawthorne 
you know, didn't really struggle with uh, tall defenders. I mean, Sam Frost had a good year. Of course, they, they still highlighted it as a need. So they've gone for Barris. They've gone for Josh Battle. Ethan Phillips has fallen by the wayside. Now, I think he was, you know, one of the best performed players in the VFL, right? I feel like he won some award. It's blurry now. It was a long time ago that that happened. But he played just the one game. I think still has some decent value. You know, he's physically mature. And this time of year, clubs are plugging key positional gaps all over their list. So Ethan Phillips could find a new home, but I'm not sure. Braden Pruce has been delisted from the Giants. Now, he hasn't played a game since 2022. And, you know, I feel like when he was at North, um, he was a pretty decent player. So I, I don't know how likely it is he gets it anywhere. I'm not too sure how many clubs are really shopping for a ruck at this point. I know St. Kilda had some interest in Soldo. So do they look at Pruce? He's 29, 207 centimeters. Uh, I think it's probably less than 50-50, but I think he was worth mentioning. Nathan Kruger from Collingwood has been delisted. I think injury has been the main part of his story. He's played six games this year, 15 in total, but he's only 25 and 196 centimeters. So probably a long shot to get picked up. But, you know, in terms of profile, if it weren't for injury, he'd probably add something to a list. Riley Bonner was also delisted this year. So out of all the players that got delisted, Maybe not number one, but Riley Bonham may have played the most games. He played 19 and had about 21 disposals a game. So, you know, if you're following him in AFL Fantasy, you probably thought, oh, he's having a good year. My understanding of what the knock on Bonham was probably ball use. So, look, I think there's still a chance he gets picked up. He's got some really good speed and rebounds, and that will appeal to clubs. Um, but the fact that St Kilda discarded him after one season, I think, at the Saints, and he played 19 games might suggest that maybe maybe they just don't think he's AFL standard. Jai Cully was also delisted by the West Coast Eagles. Um, he's a 194 centimeter midfielder forward, probably caught between two positions as a player. He did win a Rising Star nomination, kicking a bag of four against Port Adelaide. Then he did an ACL almost a week after, I think. Played just the three games this year. So could consider himself unlucky to be without a contract at this point in time. And I did read something about Richmond being interested, but I think I just read that on like Twitter. So I didn't put him in the first list there, but I could absolutely see Cully joining someone like a Richmond as a relatively mature mature midfielder who still have some upside. I'm a little surprised West Coast cut him, but uh, I think he could find a new home. Jackson Pryor and Josh Rotham probably both fall under the same category of not formally delisted, but could still be and still without a contract and both have been linked to Essendon. So Jackson Pryor, I'm not sure what the story is there, um, but with the glut of midfield depth at the Brisbane Lions and Essendon being previously interested, this one is a chance. Josh Rotham, the latest I've read is that the Essendon interest has fallen away. I don't know if it was contingent on Jaden Laverde, who is staying at Essendon. And I've also read he's more likely to stay at West Coast, but I don't know if he gets delisted at all. So we'll see. Um, it was worth keeping in there because he's uncontracted at this current point in time. Curtis Taylor is another player who is fairly, you know, experienced. He's played 76 games, just the eight this year for North Melbourne, 188 centimetre forward, and at times has looked good throughout his career, but obviously North Melbourne decided to cut ties there. Now, I read one vague link to St Kilda that is largely unsubstantiated, so I put him in this section instead, but he could, on talent, find a new home, I think. That leads us to a couple of Geelong boys in Brandon Parfit and Mitch Hardy. So Parfit, you know, previously looked like a somewhat important part of Geelong's future, and he's played 130 games. So if, if there's a club on the lookout for a mature midfielder who's played plenty of football, 180 centimetres, 18 games across the last two years, so obviously couldn't quite crack a game, and Geelong on paper haven't had the most competitive midfield, although I will acknowledge it did perform pretty well this year. So a couple of ways to look at it. If there's a club like a Richmond, which I keep saying, that want to look at this market, this cheap market of delisted free agents to bolster the experience in their midfield, you'd be looking at Richmond and West Coast. North just got Parker, West Coast got Baker and Graham. So that kind of leaves Richmond, but there's been no meaningful link in any particular direction. I think there was a link to West Coast, but I'm, I imagine that is now off the table. Um, Mitch Hardy is an interesting one. He went pick six in the mid-season draft in 2023, I reckon. And um, he's 27, 185 centimeters drafted out of the Sandful. But he averaged 28.8 disposals, five marks and five tackles from 19 VFL games this year. So he is a pretty strong VFL performer. And I think, you know, th there could be a club interested in him. Now, I would have thought Geelong would have made sense, but that's where he's just been delisted from. I just say that because they have such a strong history of dra drafting mature players. But I'd like to see this guy get picked up. You know, I haven't seen a lot of him, I'm not going to lie. But that resume suggests that he's probably a good footballer in, it, in the right system. 
he could add something to an AFL list. I'm just gonna list off five more notable delistings, but I don't think these guys are likely to get picked up. So you had Sam Wiedemann, former top 10 pick, cut by Essendon after two years, I think, at that footy club. Um, I'd imagine he probably doesn't get a new home. Caleb Marchbank has been delisted by Carlton, a key position defender who has had a horrific run with injury. I believe he's still tossing up whether he's even gonna play footy next year, but that could be contingent on what offer he gets. Seb Ross has been cut by St Kilda. Um, again, probably falls under that category of mature big bodied, but he is 30 or 31, so he technically hasn't retired, so technically an option. Alex Witherden has just been cut by West Coast, still right in the prime of his career. I think clubs could do worse than picking up Witherden, but I think, you know, for his pedigree, 130 games, and he would be absolutely free. There's a chance, there's a chance there. And Matt Taberner as well. Now I only include Taberner, who is right at the end of his career, because there was a link to some Victorian clubs. I've actually forgotten, was it North? I've actually forgotten, forgive me. However, that has seemingly died in the water and he's probably not gonna find a new home, but he technically didn't retire and he's technically on the market. So I can find two examples of players that might re-sign on with their current club and Kobe Bergiel at West Coast and Kane Baldwin at Essendon have been formally delisted, but I've read in both cases, both clubs are open to them, training with them in the preseason so they can get re-signed. It does seem like a weird strategy. I mean, on the one hand, clubs do have to have a certain amount of list changes as per the AFLPA's negotiating. You know, you've got to have a certain amount of list cuts. There's probably not the motivation here. I'd say both clubs are just looking at how many picks they're gonna take in this year's draft. You know, I think I've, I actually highlighted both of these clubs as red hot candidates to trade back into the first round of this year's draft. So maybe it's contingent on that. Like they wanna keep their options open, keep that list spot so that they can trade into the first round, take their first round draft pick. And if they do that, these players are not with their shot. But for now, they're keeping their options open in case, you know, they look at the draft and at the picks they've got and think, oh, maybe we just go with the bloke we just delisted. So that is why that exists, but I can only just find the two examples there. So anyway, guys, that is my contribution as to which players could find new homes over the next month or so. If I've missed any, let me know in the comments. But for now, thank you for watching. I'll see you in the next one. Cheers.